What's Gucci everyone? It's AJ and today I wanted to make a video about making a ruby gem from scratch. So if you've done ruby, you've definitely used ruby gems. You can go on rubygems.org and check out all the libraries people have built for you for you for you to use. You know, Rails is just one big library or gem that you can use and yes. If you don't know about ruby gems, a gem is just a library, but people in Ruby, since Ruby is named after a gem, a type of gem like a sapphire, they called Ruby gems just to be funny. But if you go on rubygems.org and search for a gem like Thor, I believe it's the most downloaded one, you can see, you can look at the gems. You can look at, hey, here's a gem, how many times it's been downloaded, the different editions, and you can even look at the source code if it's posted there with a the link, and then you can look at certain things. In my video, what I hope to do is I hope to take you through how to put it on GitHub. I'm going to take you through how to add um, build tags to it. As you can see here, it says build passing, what the code coverage is. Right now, I'll do the code coverage right there. And I'll, for right now, we'll go over just those two buttons. I believe they're the most important. And then how to basically do documentation and read me and how to add um, very easy scripts to make your progress faster and also how to do testing in your gem it's really easy and it's really awesome to contribute to open source if that's your new year's resolution so without further ado let's get started so now i want to go over the versions of ruby i'm using just to make sure that we're all on the same page and that this video isn't outdated when you watch it because i hate watching outdated programming videos because sadly things change so today it's january 6th 2014 and I'm using the newest version of Ruby right here. I'm using Ruby 2.2 which was released on Christmas 2000 sorry it's 2015. Dang it. It was released on Christmas 2014 and it's January 6, 2015. Now I got that weird hangover where you say 2014 all the time even though it's the next year. So I'm using Ruby 2.2. That's basically all you need to know. And I have bundle. And if you don't have bundle to gem install bund bundle. I believe it's Bundler. And so that will allow you to easily create gems. Now we're going to actually get started with our gem. We're going to create the initial files that make it really easily to start doing again. So we're going to do bundle gem, not install, bundle gem, and then the name of your gem. So we could just call it first gem. And so now when I, when I call it first gem, it's going to make a folder and then a lot of files within that folder for to easily create my gem. So it did a few things. It created a gem file, which is where we can say our dependencies or use other libraries for our gem. It created a rake file, which is similar to the C make file, which allows you to run various tasks really easily. For instance, let's say maybe you wanted to generate a bunch of text files for testing. That you would write you'd write that code in the rake file for that to easily happen. So then you can type rake and then generate and then all those files will be generated just like a command line entity. Really cool. The readme is where you talk about your program and say what you're going to do. The git ignore is if you don't know git, it ignores certain files so they're not pushed to your public repo. So if you had private information in a file and you didn't want that shown to the public, you would put ignore this file with my information so it doesn't go up there. Your gem spec, first gem dot gem spec is where you list all the information. I'll go into these at the very end is where you list all your information about these gems. So you say the version, your name, where you can be contacted if you want. And then version dot all be is the pretty, the simplest. It's where you say the version and the, <clears throat> oh, sorry. And then if you notice the last two files, first gem dot RB and first gem slash version are within the lib file. So the lib are within a lib folder. They're under first gem, but within lib. And that is where Lib, the lib directory is where you write the actual code for your gem, where you write the actual server implementation or the implementation of what you're going to do, whether it's a Sudoku solver or a Rails engine, it doesn't matter. Okay, and then so um, version is where you declare the version. So version one, version point point zero zero two, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now that's the general overview. But now we're going to go into it by seeding into it. And as you can see here, another the last thing that I didn't mention that was created was a Git repository was created. And so that's why if I do an LA, you can see there's a dot Git repository right there. And so if you don't know about Git, what that allows you to is easily push it to GitHub. And you're going to you should definitely have Git. It's initialized for you. Ruby does it automatically for you. Because 
because it's going to allow you to easily go back if you make any mistakes in your library. But now we're going to take a more kind of um, important look on everything. So let's do, let's go into the README here because it, you, it's going to notice it's, it generates a lot of things for you. So first of all, it puts the name of your first gem right there. It lets it says to do write a description so you can write a description of your gem, and then simply it has install so it. To install in Ruby is pretty easily. You can just add this to your gem file, gem the name of the gem, then run bundle or install it on your computer with, with gem install. And then it has a nice way of how to contribute it. And that's how you contribute on GitHub. So if, remember, you have to fill in this my GitHub username or wherever you have it on GitHub. If you have it under a group, you need to put your group there. And with that, it teaches you how to, to push on GitHub. You can fork it. You, you check, you fork it, then you check out a branch and then you can push it and then create a pull request. And this is how open source works on GitHub. This is how you can contribute to other people on GitHub. So there we go. And then let's see, we also have the license. And now the license, if you've done some coding or looked at open source program, you always see a license probably on their page. And what the license says is what you can do and do what you can and cannot do with this software. So even though it's open source and it's free, you may not be able to do something, something. So what the MIT license does, which is pretty basic, it prevents you from being sued. The software is provided as is without any warranty of any kind or implied including, but not limited to warranties of merchantability, um, fitness for a particular purpose. So it's not meant for particularly anything, kind of use at your own risk and, um, you can't, you can't, there are certain restrictions on it. So that's what the license protects you from. And you can change the license, but the MIT license fits almost everyone's needs out of the first time. And if you're creating something that's not open source that you want to remain there, you probably don't want to do that. So the, ne the next thing is going to be, let's do probably the most important thing. Let's do the gem spec. And so the gem spec is where you list everything you need to do. So first of all, um, we're going the lib the it's going to expand the lib path. So that says include the lib folder, which is going to look at okay, which is going to look at where all the code is. That's why I said all the code goes in the lib folder, nowhere else. And then it requires the the first gem version after includes the lib folder, and so now it knows the version. And within that version file, we're going to include all the files that we need. You'll see what I mean in a second or in the next video. So then use, since it's loaded the version, it can then load for first gem version. So it knows what version it is. And then you can say all you, then you can say everything you want. So you can say the name of the gem, you can change it right there. If you want, you can initialize, initialize the emails of your gem who authored it. So I could change this to, you know, AJ Gucci, whatever you want it to. And then you could write a summary, write a description, make a homepage. So if you make a specific website for it, and then you can list all the files. So in this case, it will put all the Git files within it. And then it will look at, and then all the executables, which are in a bin folder, which we have not created and may not need to create. And then at the end is something also very important is the spec.add dependency. So it, within this gem spec, you are adding your own dependencies. So it's much like the gem file where you're adding your own dependencies. So in this case, I'm adding Bundler and Rake. And so Bundle allows you to easily install the libraries and Rake allows you to easily run tasks. So now let's go to the Rake file. Because, well... Oh, you know what I can do? Guys, I'm just... I'm not showing you to guys. Okay, so this is the Rake file. It's pretty barren right now. I have another video on how to create Rake tasks. But what this allows you to do is easily create Rake tasks. It allows you to easily kind of... Um, show every, um, do tasks to be, to easily automate your process. And okay, so now we're going to go out of that right now. And we'll do this, I'll create some more in the next video. We're, now we're going to go into the gem file. Dang it. <laughs> okay, so now the gem file. So the gem file tells Ruby what dependencies to load. So right now it's just saying, okay, source, look at rubygems.org for all of the dependencies. So all the libraries are on there that you use normally. If not, you would add another source. And also right now I have no dependencies, but I told, I showed you in my gem spec, I had dependencies. So I add this, I add a keyword, which gem file knows about called gem spec. And then it says, okay, check your gem spec 
for dependencies. So in this case, it does, and it sees rake and bundler are right there. Booyah, okay? So that's about it for the basic initialization of your gem file. Again, I can show you guys lib, I guess, quickly. Um, I'm going to do first gem.rb. So first gem.rb, actually, first gem.rb, it doesn't, it's not looking, it's looking, it says put your code here, but we're going to put our code within there and we're going to actually put the version in our first gem.rb. And then if you cd into first gem, and then we'll see that there's a cat version.rb, and that just has the version which we can change. So it has the module first gem, which is referenced in our gem spec file on how to do everything. Okay, so in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to put it up on GitHub, how to create simple rate tasks, and maybe in the next video after that, we'll get into testing. Well, guys, I hope this video wasn't too long, and I hope you have a great day.